welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me today i am building my dream home here in lusaka zambia and if you haven't yet watched some of my videos that i shot prior to this you're welcome to do so if you've never met my name is bridget Quint. thank you so much for joining me today and if you're coming back then welcome back In this video, I am going to share with you how I saved about 40% of the average cost of building a house in Zambia. I'm going to share with you the cost of building a low cost house in Zambia. A few weeks ago, I shared another video talking about the cost of building a three bedroom house in Zambia. If you haven't seen that video yet, please take some time to watch that. After you watch this, this follow up video takes you through the steps that will help you save about 20 to 40% of the average cost of building a house in Zambia. My philosophy of buying is never pay retail. This applies to the clothing I buy, the houses I buy, anything else. You can always negotiate the price down. So if you are interested in learning more about how you can save costs, then stay tuned. So in the video that I'm referring to, I stated that you can build a house in Lusaka, Zambia for about forty to sixty thousand dollars and in the rural areas you can go as low as twenty thousand dollars that is based on my experience as a recent builder as well as my research as i've expressed already i'm going to share with you the steps i took in saving about 40 percent of the average cost of building a house in lusaka The first tip I'm going to share with you is always negotiate. Zambia is a negotiating culture. Never ever pay the first price that you're given. Even in many of the shops, you will be able to negotiate, but you have to know what the average Zambian, the local Zambians are paying. So do your research and see if you can negotiate those prices down. Use sweat equity when you can. In other words, if you can do the job yourself, then you should go ahead and do it. For example, I learned how to paint. And as a result, if I don't have enough money, I can literally buy a bucket of paint and do the painting myself. It is possible to learn some new skills just so you can save some money. Of course, there are limits to how much sweat equity you can use. When it comes to doing skilled work, you want to leave that to the professionals. Keep all the unused material, including tools, securely put away. Only bring out what is needed at the time it's needed. That will keep all your costs down because you will lose less. When creating your house plan, keep it simple. Simpler tends to be much cheaper because you will be using less walls. If you maximize the number of walls that you use in your house, you will be saving a lot of costs. So when you're creating your house plan, have this in mind, the simpler, the better. Of course, you can create a very beautiful house with simple lines. So just bear that in mind. Keep a tight watch on quality control as your building progresses. 
Now, you will only be able to understand quality when you've trained your eye to see quality. I've had to learn a lot about this. Make sure you inspect the quality of your material before you start building, especially before they deliver it. Case in point, I have a pile of sand that I will not be able to use for plastering because the quality is just not right. So make sure you inspect, have somebody go and inspect the quality of your material before it is delivered. For example, at my building site, I move around with a level. I check walls as they are going up to make sure everything is nice and straight. So keep an eye on the quality because sorting out mistakes will cost you a lot more than you anticipated. And try to do things the right way the first time. It's a lot cheaper that way. Stay close to what the builders or your contractors are used to. Now, there's always room for improvement and new designs, but just remember when you're bringing something completely new to the table, there will be problems. However, if you build on to what your contractor or your builder already knows, it will save you a lot of mistakes. So try to keep to what is already known and if need be, build on that. Always try to stay ahead of the problems, not behind them. What do I mean by that? Anticipate what might happen and try to think ahead and have a problem solving attitude from the start. Another big one, reduce transportation costs by buying in bulk. So if you already know what you need and you have a material list, look at everything in advance. If you're gonna need something in three weeks and you can afford to buy it right there and then, then do just that. Because if you hire one truck to bring as much material as possible, you are going to save a lot of costs. It saves you because you don't have to go back and forth using up gas or fuel to spend on transportation. Try to have all the material you need about two to three days before the workers or the contractor needs them. This will save a lot of downtime. If you don't have the materials your workers or your contractor needs, they have to wait for you to go look for that and that will extend the time of your build. And the longer your building takes, the longer it will cost you. Hire a guard or a caretaker to be around, especially at night when no one else is around. This will keep everything secure. So apart from a secure storage room, I would suggest that you hire a guard. Now in Lusaka, you can literally hire a guard for 1,500 kwacha, which is a little less than $100 for a month. So hiring a guard while you're building is definitely worth it. The other thing I would suggest to you is that you avoid pressuring the, your contractor to work fast. When you pressure your contractor to move fast, they will do what you want. But at the end of the day, quality is much more important than fast work. Many of you that are watching this video are in the diaspora. So this is what I would suggest to you. Keep an eye on the currency exchange. Whenever your currency gains, that's a good time to buy as much material as you can. When the dollar is high, that's a good time to buy your material. Just buy it in advance and store it because you know that at some point 
you will be needing it. I've also talked about this one in other videos, but it's really important that you should be around to supervise the work. Another beautiful day. The work continues. We are at window level, officially, I think. If you're not around, leave somebody reliable. If you have a contractor that knows exactly what they are doing, then you are blessed. But my suggestion is that you always have somebody independent to supervise the work if you are not around. Encourage good work with food, bonuses, and words. Whenever you see good work, encourage your builder, encourage your contractor. I've noticed that many workers will not bring lunch to their job site. So if you pay for their food, it just encourages them to work even harder. Now, some people would rather just let the contractor feed these men. That's up to you. But for the most part, I actually sometimes even cook for my guys. And I've noticed that that encourages them to work even harder. Another thing that I do to encourage my workers is I give them bonuses when they do an extremely good job. This is like a tip on top of whatever I've paid them. I've noticed that the people that have worked with me long term are aware of this. And so they put in the extra effort knowing that if they do really good, I am going to give them a bonus. The last point which I've already alluded to, I believe you will save a lot of costs when you buy the material yourself instead of handing it out to the contractor to go and buy the material. Now, the reason is you can go and compare prices and buy the best quality that you can. So I would say buy the material yourself if you can. Now, this is completely different from handing over a project to a contractor. That is definitely an option. If you can find a contractor that can do everything for you and you can trust them to do the best quality, then go for it. Especially for those of us in the diaspora who don't have the time to be available when you are building, finding a reliable contractor is definitely an option. And I will be sharing more about that on this channel, so stay tuned. So far, if you are enjoying this video, please give this video a like and also leave me a comment to share with me some of the cost reducing tips that you use in your building. And remember, liking this video just makes YouTube aware that the information I'm providing to you is of value and they will share it to other people. And please remember to subscribe because I'm seeing that 90% of all that are watching my videos are not subscribed. Now, if you've seen two, three, four, maybe five of my videos, why are you waiting? Come on, join the family. It is free to you and it helps me to grow my YouTube channel. So thank you in advance for subscribing. Let me share with you some locations where I bought really good quality material to reduce costs on my building. Number one is Buseko Market. If you don't know about Buseko Market, you need to go and check it out. They literally sell everything, timber, metal, and all kinds of things. And you can take your time and choose the best quality that you can. That will reduce your cost incredibly. The other place in Lusaka where I bought good quality material is Westgate. 
Now, this is a whole area in downtown Lusaka where there are literally hundreds of hardware stores. In these places, you can negotiate prices as compared to your big hardware stores that are found in shopping malls. Westgate is in downtown Lusaka and it's a whole area. If you're not used to crowded places, this might be a difficult place for you to be and you may have to invite somebody who is familiar with the place. But you will definitely save a lot of money by going to buy some of your products from Westgate like I did. So using these tips, I saved about 40% of what the average cost of a house in Zambia is going for. It's been a pleasure spending time with you. I hope you've learned one or two new things. And if you have, please be sure to subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment to encourage me and also make sure you like this video. As usual, it's been my pleasure spending time with you. I hope to see you next time. For now, God bless and bye-bye.